Hello and welcome to part two of my Firebase series of videos for React Native. In part one, we discussed how to retrieve data from a Firestore database, and we also discussed how to add more data to the Firestore database. So in this video, we're going to focus on the login process where the user can sign up for a new account in Firebase and they can log in with their account. And then the app sends you to the food list. There's a lot of code that I already wrote for this video, and I'm going to discuss that really fast, and then we'll get into the actual um, Firebase authentication code. So let's get started with that. So let's take a look at what we have here. Um, I created a login screen with React Native Elements, and I'm using React Navigation to navigate between screens. I created this as a just a test login screen with email and password. And I have a switch to log, or sorry, switch to sign up button here, which switches between the sign up and login format. So we have display name, email, and password for the sign up, and we have email and password for the login screen here. So if you have any questions about this, just let me know. Um, this yellow part is here because I'm running the debugger. So let's go to the login screen here and I'll walk through this really fast. We have state. So for the state, we're only using the auth mode. So we're going to switch between login and sign up. We'll come back to these later. And for switch auth mode, I'm setting the state based on this here. So based on this uh, function call. So every time we call this, we switch between login and sign up. And we have a auth form here, which we'll get to in a second. And we'll pass the auth mode to that. And we'll pass the switch auth mode function to that component. So let's go into the auth form here. So this should look pretty familiar if you looked at my video on Formic. This component just has a little bit more logic than what we did in our previous video. So with the auth form here, we have our text input setting the display name field. Uh, we have our error validation text here. We have another text input for email and password. So we're only showing the display name input when we're in the sign up mode here. So if we're in, in sign up, then we show display name input, else we show nothing. Down here with the button, we already have handle submit when we press the login or sign up button. And we have the switch to auth mode function being called on press on the second button here. I won't get into more of that now. You can kind of look at the code in the GitHub page. I have some styles here for the text and the button and the form inputs. So with Formic here, we are validating the email and password, and we have our display name here too that we're also validating. And our handle submit function right now is empty, but we will fill that in pretty soon. So let's go to our foods API list. So previously we set up add food and get foods. So those are still here. I added two new methods here, login and sign up. Um, we need to add the Firebase auth, Firebase slash auth to the pod file if we're using iOS. So do not forget that and run, actually let's go to iOS and pod install. So if you forget this step, then you'll get a red error on the screen telling you that you're missing a pod. Okay, so that's complete. So we can go to our foods API. And if we're login, we want to implement the Firebase dot auth function. So we do Firebase dot auth. And you'll see this a lot in this video. So Firebase dot auth, and then we can do dot sign in, and we're going to do with email and password. That takes in an email string and a password string. So this is a promise, so we do dot then, and we also get back something here. We might not use this, but we'll just log it just for now. Console.log, oops, value. And I won't do the uh, catch block right now just to save some time. So that's all you need to do for the login. So let's go to the sign up. So for sign up, there's firebase.auth. And then for here, 
there's a well there's a lot of different sign in methods here but we're going to do the simplest one and that is sign up oh actually sorry I yeah this is right sign in sign up so this is create user with email and password okay and then it takes in the same parameters here Oops, email, password. And then that's also a promise, so we do dot then. And this gets us a user info type of object. I'm just calling it user info. We'll see what this is pretty soon. So for now, we could just do console.log user info. Oops, there we go. And I already know the format of this object, so I'm just going to write the code here. We do user info dot user dot update profile. And actually, let's comment this out and see what this object is first. So let's save. So we need to do user info dot um, what is it? User dot update profile. And we're going to do this because we cannot update the display name at the same time that we create our account. So that's one thing that I don't really like about the Firebase signup process, but that's really my only gripe with it. So, and then we have to set something called display name. You can find all these in the documents too. So we have display name and then we're going to do display name dot trim. So we're taking so we're taking this display name here and we're putting it into the actual profile on the server of the same name called display name. This is also a promise, but we don't really want to do anything with this right now. Um, you can decide what you want to do with this yourself. So that's all you need to do for the login and sign up. So log in, sign in with email and password, sign up, create user with email and password. Pretty straightforward with Firebase. So I also want to have a new function in here that I didn't create yet called sign out. So sign out, let's just do lowercase. We're going to have a callback here too. So we're going to pass a function to this signed out, uh, on signed out. And we're going to use the same Firebase dot off. And then there's a method called sign out. Sign, make sure you use the right one here, sign out. And this is also a promise, so we do dot then. And then we don't really need to worry about any parameters with this. We're just going to log console.log. Um, signed out. And then we want to invoke this callback here. So we do on signed out. So that's all we're going to do with this file for now. Uh, let's go back to our login screen. So we have our state, we have our component data mount, we have our component will mount. So we want to import our functions from our API file. So do uh, API, that's Foos API. So from here, we want to import login and sign up. So what do we want to do with these? Uh, let's go to our auth form here. And those two functions will be called inside of this form. So we want to pass those to this form. Uh, oops. Let's do login and we'll pass the login function and we'll do sign up and we'll pass the sign up function. And you'll see why we do this in a second. And we're already passing the auth mode to the form with this dot state dot auth mode. 
So let's go back to our auth form. Apologies for jumping around so much here, but all of these are kind of intertwined right now. Um, so what do we want to do with this? We have our form set up correctly already, but we want to handle something when we submit. So what do we do when, when we submit? We have our functions that we pass to this component, right? So we can get those from the props and the handle submit function here. So we want to check the auth mode first that we, we pass here. We, pa we pass auth mode, props.auth mode. If you go back here, you see we pass auth mode, login, sign up, and switch auth mode here. So props.auth mode, we want to see if that equals login. If it does, then we want to invoke the login function that we also pass to this component. And we're going to send it our values. And if it's not login, it'll be sign up. So we do props.sign up and we pass it our values. So let's see what happens when we do this right now. Actually, we have nothing in here, so we cannot actually test this yet until we create a new user um, with, the, with the correct values here. So let's go to our button in, oops, our button in the form here. We have our switch to auth mode, we have our handle submit. So let's put in a, actually before we do that, let's go to our Firebase console here. We have our foods that we created in our previous video, part one. We have authentication in the tab here. As you can see here, we have no user yet. So let's go to our simulator here and let's create a new user. Let's call the user Vegeta and let's do test at, yeah, doesn't matter. Test at gmail.com and we'll, as you can see, our password has to be at least 10 characters. We'll just do one, 10 times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And let's press create account, let's see what happens. We have no error, so that's good. Let's go to our console, see if anything happened here. And as you can see, we have our new user created here. Pretty easy, like nothing too complicated yet. So let's go back to our app here. So at this point, we are actually already signed in in this app, but we don't really know that yet from this uh, code so far. So we need a way for our app to be notified that we're actually logged in on Firebase. How do we go about doing that? So, so there's something in Firebase called on off state changed, and that's a function to let us know that the auth state has changed on the server side. So as I mentioned in the previous video, I want all my Firebase code to be put into this one file. So if we ever moved from Firebase to a different backend, then we only have to change our code in this one place. But this specific function is very unique to Firebase, so you still might have to change this if you switch to a different backend. So we're going to call this explorer function and um, subscribe to let's do auth changes. And we're going to pass in a callback here, a callback function. And we'll call this auth state changed. And in here, we're going to use um, the on auth state changed function. If you're not familiar with this, um, you can go to on off state changed Firebase. And if you look in here, we have firebase.auth.onoff state changed. And this is the function that we'll be using or the listener that we'll be using. So we do firebase.auth.onoff 
auth, and then on auth state changed. And then we get back our user object here. And we want to, for now, let's log the user. And let's just do this for now, actually. So let's go here and let's look at our uh, debugger. Let's actually just uh, clear this and run the app again to see like a fresh log. Let's do this. And now, and now we already have our um, login function in our app and we have our user on the back end. So let's do test at gmail.com and one 10 times. And let's press login. And as you can see, we have foods API six. We have a user here. Our user has our display name, email. So let's go look at that line real quick, API six. So login is good here. So we're not actually calling this yet. So that's why we don't have this log yet. So where are we going to put subscribe to auth changes to that? So, so if you remember, we have these two lifecycle methods here that we're not using yet. So let's use component did mount to listen to when we actually are, or when we actually have a auth state changed. So let's, first let's import the method from here. And we want to call that method here and we'll pass something that we haven't created yet. So we need to create a very, or sorry, a function and that'll be called auth state changed. So what are we going to pass to this auth state changed? If we go back here, we're passing that here, so we'll, so we would at least pass the user that we're getting here. So let's do auth state changed, and we'll pass the user back to the login screen. So we're getting the user here then. So what do we want to do with the user once we get it? back on the login screen. So in all state changed, actually let's call this um, on all state changed. And we want to actually check if the user is not equal to null then we actually want to navigate from our login screen to our app screen. So, so we do this dot props dot navigate navigation and dot navigate app. So something else that I forgot to mention is that I also created this scheme for our app here, or this uh, navigation scheme. So this should look very familiar if you saw my video on React navigation. And we have our app stack here and we have a auth navigator stack. So we have two different app stacks here and app stack is just our food list. So that's a single component with our food list. And for our auth stack here, we have our auth navigator that's the name of it. And we have our login route. That's the name of our login route or our route for login. And the screen will be login. And I'm doing this screen format here so we can have our navigation options because I don't want the header to be on our, um, on our login screen here. So if I get rid of this here, for example, 
and reload it, then you can see that we have this bar here that is our app, um, app bar here, which we don't want on our login screen. So let's put that back in here. This should look very familiar. So hopefully I don't really need to go over this. We're starting with our auth route here. And if you have questions, let me know in the comments. And let's go back to our login screen. And so we're navigating to our app after we come back from our auth state change to call back here. So let's go through this one more time just so we have an idea of what's going on. First, let's save it. I'll say change is not a function. Let's see where we are missing that at. I'll state change is not a function. Uh, I'll state changed. I probably put the wrong name somewhere. Uh, I'll state changed. All state chains. Maybe I'm not, I'm not passing that to it yet. I think that's why. Oh yeah, I'm not actually passing that to the method yet. So let's pass this to the method, like so. And we're still getting login screen. Oops. Let's see. Maybe I didn't save something somewhere. Uh, I'll say changed. Hmm. Let's go back here. Let's reload this. Auth state change is not a function. Subscribe to auth changes. Ah, okay. Sorry, I. This is something that you'll probably do a lot. I forgot to. I forgot to add the. Uh... Oops. <laughs> Oops. I put this in the wrong spot. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we still get an error here. Login screen 12. Ah, okay, sorry. So this dot, I'll state. Common mistakes. Okay, so we're already logged in, so it took us right to the food list. So while we're here, let's add a button to log out in our auth form. So we're going to auth form. Let's see, where do I want to put this at? Actually, I want to put this in our um, food list screen because we are yeah, this will be part of the navigation options here. So if you're not familiar with the navigation options, please look at my previous video on React navigation. There's stuff in there on that too. So we have our title food list here. We want to add even more to this. So we want to add a header right component here. So header right. So we want to put something in the right part of the header. So what do we actually want to put here? We actually want to put a, let's just put a button. It could be a text or it could be a button or whatever you want. So let's do a button. We're using the um, React Native Elements button. So let's do that. And let's, um, actually let's, not use the React Native Elements button in this case. Let's do on press. And what do we want to do in the on press here? 
we want to do something where we actually are able to sign out of our app. We got this here. Okay, so we need to add a send out function here. So we actually have our, oops, we'll come back to this in a second. So, so we have our send out function that we created before and we're exporting it. So let's go to our food list and import sign out from our foods API file here. So we could just do sign out here. So sign out and just call that like so. What do we actually want to do with this callback? Right now we don't have anything to send to here, but if we want to add a method to send to this, we actually need to add it inside of the navigation options. So that's something that people um, make a mistake with a lot. They put the method outside of here, like maybe down here somewhere. They'll put the method and then try to pass it to here. And you'll definitely get an error if you try to, to do that. So, so the callback would be called one signed out in this case. Let's do the arrow function. And so what do we want to do when we actually are signed out? Let, for now, let's do console.log and we'll do signed out. And all we want to do is actually go back to the previous stack. So we want to do navigation dot navigate. And then the previous stack was called auth. So we have the auth stack and we have the app stack. So we're going to go back to the auth stack when we sign out. And we pass the one signed out method to the sign out API method here. This will get called and we'll send this method to the foods API. And after we are signed out, we'll call back to the food list and then we will navigate back to the auth screen. So let's save. And let's reload that. Title proper button must be a string. So we need a title here, of course. So let's do, um, let's call it logout just to be different. Logout. So we have a logout button here in our app bar. So let's press this. So actually let's go to our uh, React Native debugger here and let's clear this and press logout. And as you can see, we have signed out here in our foods API and our food list. We don't actually need to call that twice. Let's just get rid of it uh, here. So now we're not signed in anymore. So, so the buttons work as they should. So that's pretty much it for the authentication in Firebase with React Native. I was going to use this here for uh, unsubscribing, but I feel like since we're only using um, one screen for the auth state, I don't think that that's really worth doing right now. I might put it into a separate video, but this covers the essentials of authentication in React Native. Um, we can test this again real quick. We could do test one to, or sorry, test one at Gmail dot com and one ten times log in uh, let's see what we get here uh, let's try this again let's do test one two uh, 
at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah, I was creating some new users before too, so let's refresh this. Maybe the user was deleted for some reason. Oh, test, okay. Uh, okay, no one. So that's something that you might want to account for too, is that if you're, if the user is uh, not logged in, what do you do? But we won't get into that in this video. So let's just do test at Gmail and we'll do login. And now we go to our food list and we have all of our stuff here from before. We can log out and switch to sign up. We can uh, add a new one, test three at um, gmail.com. Uh, actually, let's do some name test three at gmail.com and three ten times create account and then we're go to our food list as soon as we are signed up so so yeah this is all there is for firebase authentication there's more ways to authenticate in firebase but i wanted to focus on email and password i might do the other ones in a later video and I want to do more Firebase topics in future videos. So yeah, the goal is to make this app that we're working on now a playground for future videos too, especially ones with Firebase. So I'm going to keep adding to this, to this code here on this branch. The branch is Firebase Basics. And the link for this code is in my GitHub below in the description. So yeah. Um, I hope you join me for more videos in the future. So yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.